Chapter 41 And it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh dreamed. And behold, he stood by the river. And behold, there came up out of the river seven well-favored kine and fat-fleshed, and they fed in a meadow. And behold, seven other kine came up after them out of the river, ill-favored and lean-fleshed, and stood by the other kine upon the brink of the river. And the ill-favored and lean-fleshed kine did eat up the seven well-favored and fat kine. So Pharaoh awoke, and he slept and dreamed the second time. And behold, seven ears of corn came up upon one stalk, rank and good. And behold, seven thin ears, and blasted with the east wind, sprung up after them. And the seven thin ears devoured the seven rank and full ears. And Pharaoh awoke, and behold, it was a dream. And it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled, and he sent and called for all the magicians of Egypt, and all the wise men thereof, and Pharaoh told them his dream. But there was none that could interpret them unto Pharaoh. Then spake the chief butler unto Pharaoh, saying, I do remember my faults this day. Pharaoh was wroth with his servants, and put me in ward in the captain of the guard's house, both me and the chief baker. And we dreamed a dream in one night, I and he. We dreamed each man according to the interpretation of his dream. And there was there with us a young man, an Hebrew, servant to the captain of the guard. And we told him, and he interpreted to us our dreams, to each man according to his dream he did interpret. And it came to pass, as he interpreted to us, so it was. Me he restored unto mine office, and him he hanged. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon, and he shaved himself, and changed his raiment, and came in unto Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamed a dream, and there is none that can interpret it. And I have heard say of thee that thou canst understand a dream to interpret it. And Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, In my dream, behold, I stood upon the bank of the river. And behold, there came up out of the river seven kine, fat-fleshed and well-favored, and they fed in a meadow. And behold, seven other kine came up after them, poor and very ill-favored and lean-fleshed, such as I never saw in all the land of Egypt for badness. And the lean and the ill-favored kind did eat up the first seven fat kind. And when they had eaten them up, it could not be known that they had eaten them, but they were still ill-favored as at the beginning. So I awoke. And I saw in my dream, and behold, seven ears came up in one stalk, full and good. And behold, seven ears withered, thin, and blasted with the east wind, sprung up after them. And the thin ears devoured the seven good ears. And I told this unto the magicians, but there was none that could declare it to me. And Joseph said unto Pharaoh, The dream of Pharaoh is one. God hath showed Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven good kind are seven years, and the seven good ears are seven years. The dream is one. And the seven thin and ill-favored kind that came up after them are seven years, and the seven empty ears blasted with the east wind shall be seven years of famine. This is the thing which I have spoken unto Pharaoh. What God is about to do, he showeth unto Pharaoh. Behold, there come seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of Egypt, and there shall arise after them seven years of famine, and all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of Egypt, and the famine shall consume the land, and the plenty shall not be known in the land by reason of that famine following, for it shall be very grievous. And for that the dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice, it is because the thing is established by God, and God will shortly bring it to pass. Now therefore let Pharaoh look out a man discreet and wise, and set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh do this, and let him appoint officers over the land, and take up the fifth part of the land of Egypt in the seven plenteous years. And let them gather all the food of those good years that come, and lay up corn under the hand of Pharaoh, and let them keep food in the cities. And that food shall be for store to the land against the seven years of famine which shall be in the land of Egypt, that the land perish not through the famine. And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God hath showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. 
And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand, and put it upon Joseph's hand, and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen, and put a gold chain about his neck. And he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had. And they cried before him, Bow the knee. And he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh called Joseph's name zaphnath Paaniah, and he gave him to wife Asenath, the daughter of Potipharah, priest of On. And Joseph went out over all the land of Egypt. And Joseph was thirty years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh, and went throughout all the land of Egypt. And in the seven plenteous years the earth brought forth by handfuls, and he gathered up all the food of the seven years which were in the land of Egypt, and laid up the food in the cities. The food of the field which was round about every city laid he up in the same. And Joseph gathered corn as the sand of the sea, very much, until he left numbering, for it was without number. And unto Joseph were born two sons, before the years of famine came, which Asenath the daughter of Potiphera priest of On bare unto him. And Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh. For God, said he, hath made me forget all my toil and all my father's house. And the name of the second called he Ephraim. For God hath caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. And the seven years of plenteousness that was in the land of Egypt were ended. And the seven years of dearth began to come, according as Joseph had said. And the dearth was in all lands, but in all the land of Egypt there was bread. And when all the land of Egypt was famished, the people cried to Pharaoh for bread, and Pharaoh said unto all the Egyptians, Go unto Joseph, what he saith to you, do. And the famine was over all the face of the earth. And Joseph opened all the storehouses, and sold unto the Egyptians. And the famine waxed sore in the land of Egypt. And all countries came into Egypt to Joseph for to buy corn, because that the famine was so sore in all lands. Chapter 16 I commend unto you Phoebe, our sister, which is a servant of the church which is at St. Crea, that ye receive her in the Lord as becometh saints, and that ye assist her in whatsoever business she hath need of you, for she hath been a succorer of many, and of myself also. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Christ Jesus, who have for my life laid down their own necks, unto whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Likewise greet the church that is in their house. Salute my well-beloved Epinetus, who is the first fruits of Achaia unto Christ. Greet Mary, who bestowed much labor on us. Salute Andronicus and Junia, my kinsmen and my fellow prisoners, who are of note among the apostles, who also were in Christ before me. Greet Amplius, my beloved in the Lord. Salute Urbane, our helper in Christ, and Stachys, my beloved. Salute Apelles, approved in Christ. Salute them which are of Aristobulus' household. Salute Herodian, my kinsman. Greet them that be of the household of Narcissus, which are in the Lord. Salute Tryphena and Tryphosa, who labor in the Lord. Salute the beloved Persis, which labored much in the Lord. Salute Rufus, chosen in the Lord, and his mother and mine. Salute Asyncritus, Phlegon, Hermas, Patrobus, Hermes, and the brethren which are with them. Salute Philologus and Julia, Nereus and his sister, and Olympus and all the saints which are with them. Salute one another with an holy kiss. The churches of Christ salute you. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. For your obedience is come abroad unto all men. I am glad, therefore, on your behalf, but yet I would have you wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Timotheus, my workfellow, and Lucius, and Jason, and Sosipater, my kinsmen, salute you. 
I, Tertius, who wrote this epistle, salute you in the Lord. Gaius, mine host, and of the whole church, saluteth you. Erastus, the chamberlain of the city, saluteth you, and Quartus, a brother. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Now, to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifest, and by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith, to God only wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. The end of the Epistle of Paul the Apostle to the Romans. There is a place of quiet rest near to the heart of God, a place where sin cannot molest, near to the heart of God. O Jesus, blessed Redeemer, sent from the heart of God, hold us who wait before Thee, near to the heart of God. Father, we come to You so grateful for Your Word that is like food to our spiritual lives, bread to our souls, and we come now so grateful that you're a God of love and beauty. Cleanse us, Lord, and claim us today, and energize us and empower us again through your Holy Spirit that we would be overcomers today. Lord, thank you for reminding us that if they will listen to your voice through your word and respond to you, that you will even communicate with kings and rulers and presidents, even as you communicated with Pharaoh in a dream. And Father, we pray, Lord, for the leaders of our country and the countries around the world, that they would understand that righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people, and that they would be more effective leaders if they will only listen to you and uh, obey the principles of your word. For you said, it is not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. And Father, we come to you, confessing, Lord, that sometimes we did not go to you as we should have, for wisdom, for understanding, for answers to questions in life. Why these things have happened to us? Why we have these dreams? What caused the death, the death of our loved ones? And Father, sometimes many persons have gone to witchcraft, to the obium man and to the palm reader, and these persons, when they have questions, but help us, dear Lord, to correct this and to turn to you. For you said, of witches and obia people, you said to the law and to the testimony of the scriptures, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light, no truth, nothing helpful in them. So help us, dear Lord, to turn to you for answers. And Father, when we stumble and we hurt people and we say wrong things, help us to acknowledge our faults and not be making excuses, but to understand that we are all imperfect beings born in sin and shaped in iniquity. And help us, dear Lord, to own and to acknowledge when we have done wrong. Like the butler, when Pharaoh dreamt his dream, then he remembered that he had forgotten Joseph for two years in the prison when Joseph had asked him to speak a good word on his behalf to the king. And now he said, I acknowledge my fault this day. So, Father, help us to be humble when we stumble and when we have misrepresented you and to confess our faults, whether they be an evil temper, whether they be impatience, tardiness, imperfections, whatever, a judgmental attitude, 
Help us, as you said in your word, to confess our faults one to another and ask persons to pray and intercede for us that we will overcome those faults by God's grace. Help us always to remember, Lord, to give you the glory, the honor, the thanks and the praise for the talents we have and the good that we would have accomplished. Like Joseph, when they commended him as an interpreter of dreams, he said, no, 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 God is the one who should be praised, who has given me this ability to interpret the dream. So Lord, if we have claimed glory to ourselves or praise to ourselves for what you have given us or what you have done with and through us, we ask your forgiveness and ask that you will keep us humble so that we will always say, it is because of God and I thank God and I praise God for what he has done. Dear Jesus, if, if we are being overlooked at our workplaces or not recognized on account of our talents or if because of envy people are pushing us aside, help us not to be discouraged. For as in the case of Joseph, you can create the circumstances that will cause us to shine, that suddenly people will notice the talents that you have given us and you will take us to the place where you want us to be. So help us to be patient and to just do our honest part. Father, help us to understand that our faithfulness to you will be rewarded. Joseph could have gotten discouraged. He could have given up on God in the prison because of the unjust treatment, but he remained faithful. And one day he climbed from being a prisoner to prime minister of Egypt. Dear God, help us to remain faithful to you and you will lift us up. Dear Jesus, many of us have experienced pain in life, pain from bad treatment, whether it be abuse or from the sting of gossip or people have lied about us and we have been hurt in so many ways. But help us to understand that you can remove the sting out of our experiences and we will remember but not the pain you will you can take the pain out of those experiences so be with that person who is experiencing pain today we ask that you will take away the pain from whatever experience and may they learn to trust you and to look forward to a better day when they will be able to rejoice with the pain gone Grant us, Lord, a successful day and take care of all our needs, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.